What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev. And in this video, we're going to talk about the importance of pre-success failure. If you guys are brand new to the channel, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. That's all we talk about here on this channel. And I want to thank you guys so much for subscribing and tuning in. We're over 600 subscribers and I'm just ecstatic. I can't believe how many people are tuning in. I appreciate you guys so much. So in this one, guys, I want to start out with a book quote that I got from this book called How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big by an author named Scott Adams, who is actually an artist. And he is the artist of this famous cartoon you guys might have seen before called Dilbert. His book is really interesting because he talks about how much he failed before his cartoon actually worked out for him and actually made it. A career for him and all the things that he went through personally and professionally and as an entrepreneur to make his cartoon a success and so the quote is kind of long i have it right here but i think it sets the context of this video really well so i'm gonna go ahead and read this first and then we can go ahead and jump into the the meat of the video so the quote says if you achieve your goal you celebrate and feel terrific but only until you realize that you just lost the one thing that gave you purpose and direction your options are to feel empty and useless, perhaps enjoying the spoils of your success until they bore you, or set new goals and re-enter the permanent cycle of pre-success failure. We're gonna go ahead and just jump into it, guys. I got some points that I really wanted to touch on with this one, and hopefully it just somebody out there might need to hear it, and uh, I hope it helps. So the first point about this topic of failure that I kind of reflected on and thought about is that anything that I eventually became decent or good at or skilled at, whatever it is, whether it was video editing, YouTube, coding, um, and a lot of other things just in my personal life, like learning how to type or uh, I don't know, just a bunch of things. Think about it. You suck in the beginning. That's just, that's part of it. There's no way that you just start out good at something. I mean, in terms of being better than you know someone else if you want to compare yourself you know some people are naturally you know more inclined to pick up certain things faster than other people and certain skills and people might be more gifted at certain things like let's say i don't know athletics you might be stronger bigger or uh in gymnastics you might be more flexible just naturally than other people it doesn't mean that you're not going to still fail or not be very good when you first start out at something and it's only through that trial and error process where you make your mistakes and you end up learning and really becoming good. You know, there's a there's a really cool saying, I don't know how it goes, but uh, I'm gonna kind of paraphrase it. The difference between the master and the student is the master has failed more times than the student has tried. And I think that pretty much sums that bullet point up. Whenever you're failing at something that you really believe in, that you're really working you know, hard at, that you really want to get good at, and you're failing or you're just not getting it in the beginning, it's just a natural part of being a beginner. Like sucking is just a, is a part of getting good at something. You have to learn how to be good at it. So the second thing that I took down about this, this idea of failure, pre-success failure, is that when you're in these stages, right? When you're you're trying to learn something or do something, it's just not working out, you're building a lot of character. And that's something that I, I reflected on and thought about is that, you know, to be good at anything uh, or to make anything quote unquote successful, whatever that really means, but you're bound to face some sort of, you know, obstacles, rejection, uh, resistance, whatever you want to call it. But essentially it's it's all rejection it's being told no and you're gonna you know and and that's really if someone's being kind of straightforward and honest with you but you could be told no you know in a very passive nice way you could be told no in a very rude and mean way and you know there's a lot of different ways that you could just face uh people that they don't like what you're trying to do they don't believe in what you're what you're trying to do like when i went to coding boot camp like not everyone understands the importance of coding or a technology career and why you might spend so much time away from your friends and get up your social life to actually study code and documentation like it might not make sense to them because they don't value it they don't see it so you know when they're when people are saying these things to you or like saying negative things to you or, or just you're facing rejection from people that you might expect to support you or do anything like that um that is essentially helping you build character because you're going to need to go through a lot of that to get anything 
you know, to, to work out, to become successful or to push through and hit your goal on, you know, whether it is again, like it could be finishing a degree, getting a promotion, getting a certain type of job. Um, there's apply this however you guys want. But when you're in that cycle of trying to do something that you really believe in, that you really care about and it's not working out, you are building character. If nothing else, don't look at it as that you're failing. You're building character and you're learning and you're getting better with each failure. You're learning what mistakes not to make so that you can improve the next time around. So even if it takes a long time, guys, um, you're building character and you're getting better at whatever that thing is. So the third thing I thought about is reflecting on on these times when I've been stuck in these ruts where I, I felt like I, I wasn't getting anywhere and I wasn't progressing fast enough and I wasn't learning fast enough and things weren't happening and I wasn't, my business wasn't going as far as I thought that it should. And like all these things happen, my YouTube channel isn't growing how it should. Like all these things where you get stuck in this mindset of being a failure, that you're failing at something. I also noticed that you meet a lot of people who actually help you or support you in the future if you keep going along the way. So while you're failing, you're going to be meeting people because you're going to be, you know, talking to people, trying to learn from people, trying to be around new communities that have, you know, like minds or whatever it is that you're trying to do. You're going to be around people. You're going to be around human beings. And when you're meeting these people, uh, whether you know it or not, you might, you know, just have some, some you know, great, cool conversations, casual conversations with people. And the funny thing about it is that you really will have no idea. It won't be an intentional thing that you plan in your mind. Like, hey, that person, I'm going to make sure I come back and talk to them about, you know, introducing me to this person or doing this for me or teaching me this or seeing if I can like, no, it's never going to be that straightforward. But the people that you're meeting, you'd be surprised who remembers you and why they remember you down the road. And so as you're putting yourself out there trying to again just like do these things whatever goals you have in life um and you're like not moving as fast as you want progressing you feel like you're failing you gotta understand that the people you're meeting along the way when you're frustrated when you're down when you need encouragement those people are going to remember how you were during that low point or how you were when you were failing or how you were when you responded to rejection or how you responded to failure they're going to remember those things about you and in the future you never know where they're going to go either you don't know where life is going to take them and what they might need in the future or how they might think of you and what they might remember about you so you're meeting people along the way who can possibly and likely will contribute to your success in the future while you're failing so it feels like failure but it's because you don't have this long-term concept of like what it really takes to succeed. It takes a lot of failure, but along the way, you learn a lot, you meet a lot of people, and it ends up uh, contributing to your success. So this last note that I have on this idea of pre-success failure is actually kind of a really surprising one, all right? So just hang in there with me on this one. But naive thinking can take you very, very far, okay? And before you freak out on me, just hear me out for a second. When you're first starting out in a brand new industry that you don't know anything about, or if you're trying to learn a, a brand new skill that you don't know anything about, but you just really, really, really want to do it. These things, you know, when you get excited about something in your mind, you don't necessarily think about all the objections and obstacles and things that can come up in order for you to get that thing. You just think about getting that thing. And so sometimes when that thing means enough to you, you can be pretty naive about whatever it is. So I don't know, let's say you want to be a singer or let's say you want to be an actress or actor, like whatever, right? It's kind of a naive mindset to think that like you're going to actually, you know, make a career you know, actually doing like that's going to be your only thing. It's different if you want to do it as a hobby and do other things, but like to make it to the, the level. And it was the same thing with me with sports, right? Like for me to want to be a professional athlete at one point in my life, that was a naive idea. That was naive thinking that I was going to be in that very, 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 very small percentage of people that end up actually, you know, paying all their bills from just playing sport, you know, and are able to afford a certain quality of life all from just playing sports alone and, and nothing else. It was very naive of me to think that. But that same naive thinking is what got me my full ride scholarship because it wasn't about all the obstacles that would come with getting to 
that professional league or the NFL. It was more about just getting it because I, I just really wanted it and it was just about putting in whatever work and energy and effort it took to get there. So naive thinking can actually create a lot of opportunities and it can give you that that spark and that motivation you need to actually keep going because when you're taking those long shots and you don't care, you're you're exploring every opportunity possible because of how much you care about that goal or that thing or achieving that thing or whatever it is. As you take those long shots, you might be surprised at what ends up happening, right? Like sometimes things end up working out better than you expect. And those little moments right there actually, you know, really keep you inspired, really keep you motivated. And you can just learn a lot from kind of not necessarily having a structured plan all the time, but just naively going after what you want. And that in itself will teach you a lot about just getting up and doing things and not always having a plan and not always knowing how things are going to work out, but just having that drive and having that initiative to just go out there and create opportunities and then start to see what happens as the dominoes kind of fall. So that's my kind of thoughts, guys, on this idea of failure. So in this one, guys, I really just wanted to talk about this. You know, I've just been reflecting a little bit on some things. I got a lot of content that I'm just kind of mixing up right now and just trying to put out for you guys. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. What's your idea of failure? How do you guys feel or respond when you feel like you're not doing well at something and like you're failing? Do you get down in like a rut? Do you get depressed? Uh, like, how do you guys cope with it? How do you bounce back or how do you view failure? Let me know down in the comment section down below, guys. Also in the description box down below, there is a link to my free intro to coding bootcamp course if you're just now getting into coding or going to coding bootcamp uh it's got everything i wish i knew before i went to coding bootcamp in there and it's completely free so all it costs is your email address there's also a link down there guys for the free private facebook group where all the other resources that i don't give away in the description boxes are over there so make sure you guys go hop over there and check those out as well so again guys thank you so much for 600 subscribers make sure you guys like and subscribe it really helps me stay motivated to put this content out for you guys this is darren with Dan the dev and i'll see you guys in the next video all right peace